Monsieur le commandant en chef, le 6 août à 5h30, des unités des forces ukrainiennes, au nombre d'un millier d'hommes au plus, sont passées à l'offensive en vue de capturer une portion du territoire du district de Soudja, de la région de Kursk. Grâce aux actions des unités de protection de la frontière en coordination avec les gardes frontières et les unités de renfort, ainsi qu'aux tirs de l'aviation, des troupes de missiles et de l'artillerie, la progression de l'ennemi dans la profondeur du territoire russe dans le secteur de Kursk a été arrêtée. Maintenant, les unités du groupement de troupes nord avec les unités de protection des frontières du FSB continuent à éliminer l'ennemi dans les zones à proximité de la frontière russo-ukrainienne. L'ennemi a perdu 315 hommes, dont au moins 100 morts et 215 blessés. 54 véhicules blindés, dont 7 chars, ont été détruits. L'opération sera terminée par une défaite écrasante de l'ennemi et le retour aux frontières nationales. Fin du rapport. So, Ukrainian soldiers are inside Russia right now. I know many people did not imagine this. Many people did not give them credit. Many people thought by now they will be completely smashed, but they're not. They've gone into Russia, 30 kilometers inside Russia, that's about 20 miles, controlling an entire region, displacing about 76,000 people. We're talking here men, women, children, Russians that have scattered into more peaceful areas of Russia. This is the first, fellas, a very first since Second World War. This Today, I received several reports from Commander-in-Chief Sersky regarding the front lines and our actions to push the war onto the aggressor's territory. I am grateful to every unit of the Defense Forces, ensuring that Ukraine is proving that it can indeed restore justice and ensure the necessary pressure on the aggressor. What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day, and it's important that we follow up with us. We need an African perspective of things that are happening in the world. Thank you very much for choosing us. Let's stay connected and understand. R Ukrainians are right now, few days later, into Russia. So it's not like we came, we acted and went back home. They got into Russia. They did destruction. They took Russian hostages. We're talking about military soldiers, Russian soldiers as hostage in Russia. They are still in Russia. Vladimir Putin has organized a counter-terrorism attack. That's what it's called counter-terrorism, considering Ukrainian inserted Russia as an act of terrorism. Putin has enclenched an attack against Ukrainians in Russia. But as far as we can see right now, if the Ukrainians are still in Russian territory, it is very revealing. My question is this one. Is Russia less powerful than we all thought in the past? Is Russia maybe not this powerful country, powerful army that we thought it was? Is Russia power only its nuclear power maybe? And its army is not special? Are the Ukrainian soldiers special in their operation? Or more powerful than we gave them credit for? I think this is very interesting. You know, I always say this. If somebody comes and pinches you and you believe they are younger than you or less stronger than you, but they are disrespectful, I think the right time you stop them is right away, okay? They pinch you one time and you tell them, listen, do not dare to do me this again, or I'm going to do something to you. If the next time they touch you again, you must slap them really hard. Because if you don't slap them, the next thing is they're going to touch your boob, if not your face, or punch you in the jaw. Yeah. If somebody does something wrong, or want to touch your mother by the hand, you need to smash them right away. You shouldn't wait until they get to the face. Because if you don't do it, They're going to get to the face of your mother or touch them boobs. And you're not going to like that. So initially, it was the Europeans that couldn't give Ukrainians weapons because they thought long-range missiles will hit inside Russia. And that would be very dangerous for everybody, even Europe. Because Russia could enclench and start a world war. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Then very slowly, Russia took up a region of Ukraine, four region of Ukraine, where Russophone, people that speak Russians, live. They are next into Russia. And I remember Vladimir Putin saying, if you dare to attack this land, it's going to be considered as you are attacking Russia into Russian land. And we're going to react in the most emphatic manner possible. What happened next was a few days later, Ukrainians attacked that region. After Ukrainians attacking the region, Russia didn't do anything specifically scary. So what happens is, oh, when you touch and you go like, 
I expected you to hit me harder, but you haven't done that. You go like, oh, okay, so you all talks. The next thing was the Europeans then gave Ukraine the right after two years of hitting Russia inside Russian territory. They didn't do that in the past because they were afraid that Russia would react. But after touching Russia here, touching Russia by the balls, and Russia did not react, then they say, you know what? Oh, let's give them authorization. Let's give them jet planes. Let's give them long range missiles. And then the Ukrainians started hitting Russia with drones. They are testing Russia. They went with drones and hit the target inside Russia. Now, next thing is what? They have gone inside Russia physically. And what has Russia done? Not an amazing job. And what do you think this sends as a message all across the world, especially to the enemies of Russia? That Russia is not as powerful as you think. Just imagine leaving Cuba and annexing or taking a part of Florida. That's exactly what happened. Imagine a country or Russia going from Cuba and going into Florida. How would the United States of America react? Or let's say, let's take Venezuela. They're not friendly with America. They go and attack a part of Florida in the USA. How would the United States react? They're probably going to shoot nuclear bombs. Now, Russia has not done that. And their army has not smashed the Ukrainians. There can only be two things. Either Russia is playing a very intelligent game or Russia is not as powerful as we think. We know that Russia has reacted in what they call counter-terrorism. They hit Ukrainian tanks in Russian territory, but they've also shot missiles into Kiev. And those long-range missiles, apparently, as per Ukraine, are North Koreans. Now, many people are asking questions. Surely North Korea is watching. Iran is watching. China is watching. Everybody is surprised to see how can Ukrainians go into Russia without anything drastic. I mean, just imagine you are Ukrainian soldiers and then you are told by your commander, oh, my brother, tomorrow we're going into Russia. Like, yeah, we're going literally into the Russian territory. What's happening in your mind is what? You're probably going to go kiss your family goodbye because you're 100% sure you're not returning, right? You're 100% sure. You're gonna, I'm sure those soldiers were told, go kiss your family goodbye. Tomorrow we're going into Russia because what we're going to see is hellfire. No doubt about that. Now, what kind of mentality one has to be into? engaging to, connected to, for you to decide to go into Russia and do an incursion, an attack. It must be the last level of warriorship, I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying. Are we being led into thinking that Russia is more powerful than we actually think? Or the Ukrainians are being helped by NATO? Now, were the soldiers that cross into Russia Ukrainians or NATO soldiers? Big question. They certainly are being helped by NATO. And that is something we're going to find out very soon. Were they only Ukrainians or they were being accompanied by NATO soldiers? The question is very simple. Sometimes when you fight in the name of glory, in the name of honor and dignity, you can do tremendous things. Are the Ukrainians fighting in the name of dignity and honor for their country? Well, Russians believe a big chunk of Ukraine belonged to them because the big chunk of Ukraine was not Ukraine before the Soviet Union was dismantled. And they believe that the region of Ukraine that has Russophone or people that speak Russia should be annexed to Russia because as per Russians, Ukrainians mistreat people of Ukraine that speak Russia. What lesson can you learn for this? It means when somebody really wants to defend his honor and dignity, he's capable of going to give his life in the name of honor and dignity. Because let me repeat this again, the Ukrainians that crossed into Russia, all of them knew they were not returning home. No doubt about that. I'm sure they surprised themselves to see themselves up until now, right now as we speak, they are still in Russian territory. And is that confident boost for them or not? It's a major confidence boost. Now, why isn't Putin shooting the big shot, the big guns, the nuclear guns? We know that in Ukraine right now, in Zaporizhia, a nuclear plant is on fire. This nuclear plant is very dangerous. This is the biggest European nuclear plant. And why is the nuclear plant dangerous? Because nuclear plants have radioactivity. Radioactivity is very dangerous. You remember the Second World War after America threw the nuclear bomb onto Japan. What happened was many Japanese were unalived. But even after the blast, what happened was the major amount of radioactivity remaining on the land, thus causing many Japanese to get funny diseases, to have funny conditions. Even their children and the children of their children, many kids were born with deformations. One hand, one eye, funny looking children because of nuclear reaction, the radioactivity that was left by the American atomic bomb. Now, this nuclear plant in Ukraine also have radioactivities. Have you ever heard of Chernobyl? This is Chernobyl. This land is completely destroyed. It was a spill of nuclear reaction. It destroyed the land. 
destroy the waters, destroy completely the environment. Unlivable. Up until today, it's pretty dangerous. The Russians accuse Ukrainians of bombarding the nuclear plant because the nuclear plant is in Zaporizhia. Zaporizhia is controlled by the Russians. And the Ukrainians accusing the Russia of setting it on fire. They say the Russians have done that as a blackmail, hoping Ukrainians will stop or the Europeans to stop because everybody is afraid of nuclear reactions. Well, even Putin used the big weapons that we know, the nuclear power, the nuclear bombs and all this stuff that he's saying. Is he now going to use them? Now, the question is, if he doesn't use them now, isn't this a confidence boost for the Ukrainians and the Europeans that are now seeing gaps and holes into Putin's game? Are we seeing very slowly the end of this war in Ukraine with Putin being completely dismantled? How is the morale of the Russian soldiers when they hear that their territory has been invaded? Let me know how you feel about this. It's always a great pleasure. God bless.